Hey, what's up, everybody? This is uh, Reggie Renson, Specialist, Specialist Beats. I didn't feel like doing no beats today. It's Saturday. I've been working hard, working at my, my, you know, my day job at KBO Audiovisual, doing a lot of audiovisual jobs, uh, unseasonably busy uh, season for the summer, and I thank God for it. Usually this is the time I'm, you know, money kind of tight, but, you know, thank, thanks be to God, July and August, man, it's been really busy, so, you know, of course that makes me tired too, and not have much room to do music and make beats and stuff, but, um, I woke up today at like five in the morning, and I watched the whole, uh, Free Meek Mill, um, joint, and I always put a, a I don't know why I put it say Mills. It was free week mill. Um, but I just watched that whole thing. And to me, I just felt like... I, I don't know if people are sorry. I don't want to spoil it for people. But if you're a fan of hip-hop, and, and even if you're not a fan of hip-hop, you should... I definitely recommend you watch it. You know, it's definitely eye-opening to... Uh, some of the, the issues going on with our criminal justice system in this country, as great as it is, still has a lot of things that, uh, with the, the law and the process, the due process for people, that's really antiquated. And, um, you know, unfortunately, he had to live through that and is still living through it because he's not, you know, out off, off the, he's not out of the blue yet. He's not, he's not off, you know, by any stretch of the imagination, but, you know, the documentary that showcased everything from the beginning till, till now is just eye-opening to, to the things that are happening to people like him and even in his unfortunate circumstance, how fortunate he is to have had the type of resources that he has because not a lot of people have the resources that Meek Mill have um, has had and, and has had up to this point uh, as far as lawyers and things of that nature um, to, to help them and advocate for, for him and even with the resources he's had and still has the stuff that he still has to endure um, I think that has in watching the documentary that has kind of been a blessing and a curse for him to have the resources that he has because I think that the reason why it's being dragged out is because they want to make, they always want to take the person that is doing well for themselves and, and has uh, has a gift and is using his gift and, and, and is profiting from his gift to make that as a statement to, uh, to other people. And people, I think what they don't understand that that, that kind of was a backlash against them to, to try to do that. Because now, you know, more people are becoming more aware of how this criminal justice system is really acting. I think it's, it's similar to um, to how, you know, racism in this country, how people were turning a deaf ear to racism back in the 60s and stuff. And then, you know, certain things happened, you know, that were eye-opening. And, you know, the media broke it open and um, it, it causes people to be more aware of what was going on and then taking action. So I think the, the greatest thing that, come, that, that came out of his suffering and that is coming out of his suffering and even his suffering still uh, up until now, I can imagine that people are becoming more aware of how things are, uh, how the criminal justice system is you know, doing things and how there's a lot of crooked stuff going on and, and then the unfortunate thing in, in any type of agency to me which is both beneficial and not beneficial you know that is ran by people and people will always be people unfortunately we unfortunately and fortunately that we have people be people um, we depend on people to be people but to be objective um, and objectivity is not always possible. Well, it is possible depending on what 
uh, people have been objected by or objected to. You know what I mean? Um, we all have our prejudices. We all have our things that we have we stay away from or have made an uh, informed opinion based on what we have been objected to. So, you know, <laughs> that I got all of that out of looking at this documentary and I and I related to the documentary The Central Park Five, the, the injustices that those five gentlemen faced, uh, five black African American males, uh, boys at the time, and the things that they, they went through and you know, Meek Mill being in that same uh, situation, you know, so I definitely recommend, you know, you guys look at it. It's on Amazon Prime. I don't know where else it is. Uh, I happen to have Amazon Prime, so I got it for free. Uh, I was watching it for free because of my membership to Amazon Prime, which I'm pretty sure most of us have. So if you got, if you got like, I don't know, I think it was three or four hours worth of watching all the episodes, it's like five episodes of the documentary, I definitely recommend that you definitely watch it, you know, and, and me just being rebellious today and saying I wasn't doing any beats, making any beats today, but, you know, if you're a hip-hop fan, you're not a hip-hop fan, hip-hop, that's it, hip-hop fan, um, definitely. Definitely, I definitely recommend you look at that. If you haven't seen the Central Park Five joint, you need to watch that too. You need to watch both of those things. And it will, I know it's galvanized me to take a look at things from a different perspective. And, and I'm not going to front. I mean, as much as I love hip hop and have loved it since I was young, you know, of course you've heard about, you know, rap artists before they became artists having their brushes with the law and stuff like that. And when I first heard about this, I was like, when they, they stated what the charges were, I was like, oh, another rapper, you know, with drug charges, gun issues and all that. All right. But when you see this, it's like, oh, man, I didn't know it was like that. And <clears throat> um, it's, it's just crazy. It's, you, it's definitely a must see and a must experience because now, you know, that has further changed my mind. And challenge my mind about a lot of things about our criminal justice system and and our communities with our young black kids especially black males because the attack is definitely on our black males you know the, and I think it's mostly based on fear and it's the fear of, our, of us knowing our potential you know and things like that well, I don't want to you know have this long video but I just wanted to you know, let you know what, what was on my mind and what was on my agenda today, which was no beats. I didn't feel like doing no beats today. So, and, and you know, you should have days like that as a producer. I know that we are always exposed to a lot of people be like, no work, you know, always hard work and always, you know, hustle hard and all this stuff like that. But some days, man, even, even if... Even if it's something that you love doing, and I love music and I love making beats, don't get me wrong. Sometimes you just need to stay away from that sometimes, you know, so that you can foster your love. Because I don't only love making beats, I love doing other things too, you know what I'm saying? So, that's my rant. I just wanted to talk about that, and that's it. Peace.